Sojourner Truth was truly a remarkable woman. While she faced many hardships throughout her life, she used these challenges from her personal experiences and channeled them into her activism. Nobody ever helps me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into the barns and no man could heed me. Isabel Bumfrey was born to James and Elizabeth Bumfrey. She had about 10 to 13 siblings, all of whom were sold into different households when she was a young girl. Her and one of her brothers were the only two that weren't sold away from their parents. Colonel Haddenberg bought James and Elizabeth Bumfrey from slave traders and kept their family at his estate in rural New York, where they slept in a muddy cellar beneath the house with many other slaves of all ages and gender. She fell in love with a man named Robert, but was not allowed to marry him because his slave owner forbid it. She later married a man named Thomas, who she was raped by and had five children with. Sojourner recalled being whipped by Dumont, her cruel slave owner. At age 18, she escaped from Dumont with her daughter, Sophia. After escaping, Isabella wandered, not sure where she was going, and prayed for direction until she arrived at the home of white Methodist Isaac and Maria Van Wagner. Soon after, Dumont arrived, insisting she came back and threatening to take her baby when she refused. Isaac offered to buy her services for $20 until the state emancipation took effect, which Dumont accepted. She later learned that her son Peter was sold illegally as a slave in Alabama. She took this case to court and won the case and got her son back. This created a huge impact with Truth, being the first African American woman to take a court case against a white male, setting the stage for more of her women's rights activist movements to come. The year 1843 was a turning point for Balm Free. She became a Catholic and changed her name to Sojourner Truth. She believed that she was called by God to travel around the nation, sojourn, and preach the truth of his word. She believed God gave her the name Sojourner Truth. She told her friends, the spirit calls me and I must go, and left to make her way traveling to speak about equal rights for all and the abolition of slavery because she believed God was urging her to preach about these subjects. In 1844, she joined the Northampton Association of Education and Industry in Northampton. While there, Truth met William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick Douglass, and David Ruggles. Since the journer had not received an education, she was unable to read or write. As a result, she recited her memoirs to William Lloyd Garrison, who privately published the narrative of Sojourner Truth, a Northern slave, in 1850. It's crazy to think that she was born into slavery, escaped, and made a lasting impact that we will never forget. She is known for her remarkable speech, Anti-Woman, at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention, where she talked about the discrimination she was experiencing as a black woman, about the inequality between blacks and whites, as well as women and men. That same year, Sojourner Truth, spoke at the first National Women's Rights Convention in Worcester, Massachusetts. In 1864, Truth was employed by the National Freedmen's Relief Association in Washington, D.C. She worked to improve conditions for African Americans. In October of that year, she met President Abraham Lincoln, who was pushing for the abolishment of slavery. In 1865, while working at the Freedmen's Hospital in Washington, Truth rode in the streetcars in a form of protest to help force their desegregation. Sojourner Truth put her reputation to work during the Civil War, supporting the Union and helping to recruit black troops for the Union Army. After the Civil War ended, she continued working to help the newly freed slaves through the Freedmen's Relief Association, then the Freedmen's Hospital in Washington. During this time, she continued her campaigns for equal rights for freed slaves and women. She was suffering from great pain closer to the end of her life. She died at her home in Battle Creek, Michigan in 1883, but her impact is still present today. There's a statue of Sojourner Truth in Florence, Massachusetts, as well as one in bronze on the campus of the University of California, San Diego. Sojourner has had a lasting legacy for her advocation of equality for sexes and races by speaking through her personal experiences and her unique interpretation of the Bible as a former female slave. I can't read a book, but I can read the people.